Hey guys, Ark here, bringing to you Chapter 2, Episode 5 of my Learning Night Elf series. This episode we're going to be covering Objectives versus uh, Undead, so the Night Elf versus Undead matchup. We started the Objectives videos with the last episode with the Night Elf versus Human, so just continuing on until we finish all the races here. Um, so again, we're going to be following suit where... Uh, I general I go over one general opening from the Night Elf. So in this perspective, on this uh, in this case, we're still continuing with the Demon Hunter Archer tech. So that's essentially episode or chapter one, episode one of the Learning Night Elf guide covered the uh, twenty one food archer uh, uh, tech. That's essentially what I'll be doing in this video, and I'll be going with the Demon Hunter for my first hero. Um, so for those of you that are familiar with the uh, the series so far, you can go back to that first episode and see what my build order for it is. Uh, another thing I want to uh, touch on before we get too far into this is you'll notice that uh, my base layout has deviated a little bit from when uh, I did the chapter one, um, I can't remember the episode number off the top of my head, but chapter one episode of the build layout versus undead. Um, one of the key things that I, I, um, I want to mention here is that the, the importance of, of, or the basis for why I built the bases that I did versus undead was to, uh, it made it, helpful for me to defend against ghoul rushes or just heavy ghoul play. Um, you don't really see that too often anymore, um, but you still want to be, uh, I guess, have that pr preparation in the back of your mind. Um, and so gener so essentially what you're seeing here is I, I'm going to be building my moon wells over in the top part of my base, but what it's still doing is it's giving me really natural choke points here, uh, here, and here, all of which are relatively protected by the tree of life um which uh it, it's very important when you're defending against the ghoul rushes that you have these force choke points that you can stick a hero right in front or block off pathways um and just make it really difficult for the ghouls to get full surface area on your archers um, and so i still have the same protections that i had before um but what it allows also is i have a very open base that makes it really easy to defend against uh, really annoying harasses like guard harasses um, or just really uh, weird plays in my base itself. So that's kind of why that's the purpose of the deviation between the, the video that I previously made. And I just wanted to touch on that though, uh, touch on that for those of you that are familiar with the series so far. Um, so to kind of uh, recap again, um, so the previous episode we covered DH archers versus uh, human and kind of the core aspects of what are what are you scouting for, why are you doing what you're doing just in the early game and stuff like that. So we're going to continue that streak here. Um, so on this map, we're on Last, Last Refuge. A really standard opening for Night Elf here is the AOW Creep This Green Camp here. Um, it's going to give you a, a static item, whether it's claws. This, in this case, it was Gloves of Haste. Um, and so typically what you'll find um, uh, as the undead players, uh, I guess, refine their skill levels and your skill level goes up and such such and such um this acolyte scout will generally scout this out what it's usually looking for is what your hero opening is um but so you, you'll generally do this uh, creep here um and then i as uh if i just take turn back fog of war this is actually a game of myself also um you can see that my wisp pathway here just went right down the center of the map and is scouting out the undead base so what i'm looking for here one is build order so I'm gonna let see, see my see a little bit more here. I see two zigs. Um, I see ghouls that are about to uh, move over into uh, possibly to creep, most likely to creep, and the DK is out here. That instantly tells me, okay, it was not a late hero. Um, so I uh, a couple of things that a late hero could suggest is uh, fast expansion, um, something weird like that, because it gives you a little bit more ghouls than you would typically have. Um, it also tells me that it's not an early graveyard, um, so they're going to be, uh, he's going to be going for, um, I guess, a little bit more heavier ghoul play, potentially, um, or just maybe a ghoul focus play. Um, but anyways, I'm going to slow this down a little bit, and so what I scouted right here is specifically, the again, the uh, build. So I know early fiends aren't coming, um, it's going to be ghoul-centric play, um, and he's going to be creeping with his ghouls right away. So the reason why creeping, creeping with his ghouls right away are important um, is because right here, you'll see I'm finishing this creep camp here. Uh, I know that most likely he's creeping this camp here with his ghouls. Um, if you were to use your ghouls, um, creeping this and creeping this don't make a whole lot of sense. Um, arguably, you, you could do all of those, but generally, 
um, this is going to be the creep camp that they use to creep all their ghouls with, particularly because it uh, it's um, they're going to be looking to try and get level two, right? Um, but by knowing that information, I know that I'm not going to threaten his first camp because it doesn't make sense for me to run cross map. He's going to get the experience no matter what. Um, I can't really threaten it very much. So I'm just going to accept that he's going to creep his first camp, creep level two myself because I can creep faster because of the AOW. So I'm going to be on my second camp when he's still finishing up his, his first. So I can creep level two and then meet him at his second camp. So all that... All those decisions were made solely due to the fact that I saw his ghouls moving out, out over to the um, green camp here. Um, now, it's 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 very unlikely that as a newer player, you're going to be making these decisions on the fly. But it's really important to understand the thought process that goes behind why, we, uh, why uh, a higher level player will make the decisions that they do. Um, because if you understand the thought process, you can be actively thinking about it and, and trying to make use of your scouting information. Um, you probably won't make the right calls until you've played a ton of games, but just thinking about it and having it on your mind will generally help increase your skill level at a more rapid uh, pace. Um, so I creep level two because I know that I, I want to meet him at a second camp. What I'm trying to do here is essentially creep aggressively. So I got my level two, and it's now time to run to his side of the map. Ultimately, my goal is to get as close to level three by the time tier two hits while limiting his potential to be level three at the same time. On this map in particular, it's really uh, straightforward because you can run to his side of the map um, and aggressively deny his level two by generally, if they creep this green camp, they're going to go for this Murlocs. Uh, because that's a fast level two, and it's it's general. It's the fastest level two after creeping this camp here. Um, but because I'm going to be faster, I'm going to have essentially two archers when that when I get to that murloc. And DH level two plus two archers generally can prevent this creep camp from getting crept. And we'll just watch that here as we speed up a little bit. So I meet him at his murloc. He creeps a little bit of it, and I do have a little bit of poor control here. Um, so he does get a little bit more experience than um, I, I guess I, I would have ideally liked to see. But he's essentially lost all of his death coils. He has to run back. He can't he can't continue this fight here because he knows that my archers are coming and I'm going to do a lot of damage to him. Now I get a little bit fortunate here with some detonates, uh, the ensnare, but then he brings back the skellies. Um, missed, I missed an attack right there that I could have gotten. But essentially what I'm doing here is slowing down his level three level two and he's he's really going to get scared to actually finish this creep camp especially when i detonate those and all he's got is a couple of ghouls left so essentially i've gotten to the point where i've stopped his creeping that's one um i'm putting myself in a position to steal his camps so by the time tier two rolls around if i did steal any of his camps i'm more likely to be close to level three than he is um what that also has done is this is basically his creeping uh, abilities right here. Um, if he can't creep this, his hero has already lost all his mana. There's really not a whole lot of straightforward decisions he can make that will put himself in a favorable position. Um, and so again, I just want to stress it. Uh, when you scout, the the biggest thing here was I scouted that the ghouls were moving. Had I not scouted the ghouls were moving, um, his, well, I guess regardless, his opening suggested that he was either going to be running to my base and harassing um, or creeping and the reason why is because he went for that uh, he went for the um, ghouls opening as opposed to going for like the um, uh, early graveyard opening so the early ghouls opening um, essentially or the the ghouls opening without the graveyard I guess is what I'm trying to say here um, is telling me that he's going to use his ghouls to creep um, or he's going to run to my base. So if, if he runs to my base, he's going to use his ghouls to creep while he's on my side of the map. Um, but since he's not running to my side of the map, I know he's going to use his ghouls to creep. And so that's why I expect this camp to be crept. I know that I have time to meet him at the Murloc camp, so I creep level two myself. And I still have a, I have a level two, or I have one level advantage with archers, and I stall his level two. So that's how we got to this point right here. And we're going to uh, speed up a little bit because this is just a, um, I guess, uh, general shenanigans as we were both teching the tier two. 
Um, ultimately, what I want to try and do here is just stall him out as long as possible until he feels that he can no longer fight me. And that means that I can start taking this Murloc camp or I can take this Priest camp. And that will get me to level 3. If he never stops until tier 2 happens, well, I'm going to get my Naga and I'm going to threaten his ghouls because I, I'm going to be building a lot of archers. Um, and so that's what we're seeing here. Um, I back off um, and we basically just wait until tier 2. Um, so I, I can't stress this, stress this enough. There's a lot of early game decisions that uh, a weaker player may not recognize. But from both sides here, um, we are... We are we're constantly making decisions or we've refined certain things in our gameplay that allow us to not lose at this point. Because let's say, for example, he crept this camp really slowly and he didn't even steal any of these creep camps by the time I got here. He essentially has completely lost this creep camp and this creep camp because if he, if he was not able to creep this fast and I catch him before he starts this, then he's... He's going to be level one up until tier two comes, which means I'm going to have a level two uh, demon hunter and a level one tavern hero. He's at best going to have a level one DK plus a level one da tavern hero. Or if he's going Lich, he's just going to have a level one DK until the Lich comes out. So I'm going to get total map control at tier two. I'm going to steal his creep camps and he's basically lost. And all of that comes down from solely just creeping this camp slowly because I know that I can creep this safely because I know his build. Um, so let's see if I want to touch on anything more and, and you can find instances of that regardless of, so if you, uh, if you don't creep this camp first and you go for one of these, um, let's say you're going to be just, you're just solo creeping with the DK and you creep this camp slowly, the same thing can happen. If, if I essentially prevent, or I, if I gain total map control by tier two, there's really not a whole lot I can do, or you, the opponent can do to win the game um, and so ultimately my focus here is to put myself into a position to try and gain map control by doing what i'm doing here um anyways a little convoluted there I, I apologize for that um let's unpause a little bit more uh, i believe there's a one thing i really wanted to touch on and so if we take a step back from a more hypothetical like gameplay uh specific things uh Generally, you don't want to build too many archers if they're going to go a fiend opening. If they're going to go heavy ghouls, the extra archers are really, really strong because at tier two comes, they're going to try and uh, do uh, take, pick off some archers here or there or whatnot. But if you go up to five archers versus the heavy ghouls, um, it maybe not even heavy ghouls, but if they for specifically if they go like a ghoul build or something, and you go five archers and you micro it well. It's really easy to pick off the ghouls, and it's hard to lose the archers as long as you your positioning is good. So that's what we're going to kind of... Oops, what is going on there? Unpause. We'll go on. So I pick up my Naga. He's at a position where he wants to get a Naga most likely. So he's... he's well, he's not even tier 2 yet, actually. So I'm way far ahead of him tech-wise. But he's got four ghouls, um, and I have four archers plus a Naga. So I lost one of my archers due to, uh, it was revealed right here, actually, that's the corpse right here, interesting, um, and then I'm just going to get free reign of all these ghouls due to how the game has been playing, or been going so far, and now I've, I've essentially taken map control right now, because I've killed one ghoul, he couldn't get a second hero, and now I'm just going to go ahead and start creeping if he uh, allows me to, but he doesn't, so I'm going to just basically pick off more ghouls, and essentially this is just going to continue on, uh, I, I've claimed map control, so unless something, unless he uh, makes some nice plays and is able to regain that map control, I should have, I should be able to turn that map control into a creep advantage, which will then turn that creep advantage into higher level heroes. And I, as long as I keep up my production and tech and everything, it should be a pretty straightforward uh, pathway to the end of the game. Um, so really a longer episode for this one. I'm going to call it quits here, guys. That was uh, um, chapter two, episode five. Um, let me know uh, in the comments how you guys are liking these kind of episodes as well. I'm just really more so going down uh, games that I played or watched um, and just giving the thought process behind some of the decisions that, decisions that they're making. Um, so if you like those kind of format of videos, let me know. And if you have any suggestions on videos of to cover as well, 
feel free to let me know and I'll be able to uh, cover those as well. So thank you for tuning in. Take care. Bye.